the Panthers trying to tie together a roster with a quarterback who's worth a crap. Let's hear from Scott Fitterer, the general manager of the Carolina Panthers, talking about the possibility, and this is from last week, Fitterer talking about the possibility of taking a quarterback with that sixth overall pick in the 2022 draft. You absolutely want to hit on that pick, and it's hard to pass on whether it's a, you know, a cornerstone left tackle, whether it's a pass rusher. But quarterbacks are hard to find, and sometimes you have to swing to ta- and take a shot at these guys. And if you miss, you can't you know, stop swinging. You have to take a shot again. And uh, it's the most important position on the field, so there's a lot of ways we can go. Quarterback is definitely one of them, and we do like these guys. Let me say this. First thing he said was, you want to hit on that pick. Let's remember something as we get within 22 days of the 2022 draft. It's always important to enunciate your T's. But they they blow picks from the top of the draft to the bottom of the draft. The busts are there in the top 10. You want to hit on it, but half the time you don't. We can go back every year, and you'll never hear that as we get closer to the draft. Everybody who's kind of part of the draft grift and selling the hope to everyone, hey, there's a great pick. Oh, that guy's going to be a great player. And all the positive. You won't hear anything about the possibility. You won't hear a word about it during the draft coverage especially. But it slips out of the conversation as we get closer and closer to the draft. Half these guys aren't going to make it. Half these guys are going to suck. Half these guys are going to find a ceiling that they're not going to be able to bust through. Whether it's because it's limits on their ability, limits on their will to get the most out of their ability, or just good old-fashioned I got smacked in the mouth by a grown-ass man, and I said, oh, boy, that's it for me. That happens, too. You just don't know until you get to that level who's going to step up and who's going to step off. But half these guys that, you know, that Thursday night, the parade of suits, none, none nearly as glorious as the one you wore in 2009, but we can only hope. Once we get to that point, it's all going to be positive, and that sets the fans of these teams who are trying to buy hope up for disappointment. But the problem is we don't know. That's why nobody finishes that sentence. Nobody fills in that gap. Hey, by the way, half these guys aren't going to make it because we don't know who's going to make it and who's not. All the work, all the effort, all the study does not tell guys like Scott Fitterer who's going to make it and who's not. That's the amazing aspect of this. No, I mean, you're right. That, that, that is. It's the amazing aspect. It's the aspect that makes it amazing, though. I mean, it makes it amazingly awesome as far as, yeah, we don't know. It's great the process in which these teams and we all go through to kind of evaluate the players. Of course, the teams themselves go through, you know, jumping over hoops and looking under rocks and doing everything that way. Because, yes, it's not foolproof. It's not. You know, even the teams that we know are awesome at the draft, you're, you're, you're not going to evaluate every person and their personality and their work ethic and how they'll fit with this team and some of these scenarios. It's impossible to know if that's going to work. So you're right from that aspect. But there are things you can gleam a little bit and put together. And you can take, like, from past drafts and – Guys you have drafted, whether it's, you know, common physical traits, common mental traits, work ethic, you know, love of the game. And you could start to piece that stuff together a little bit to give you an educated answer. But to your point, yes, it's not foolproof. And it is. It's 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 dicey. But I think that's what makes it awesome, too. And I think fans want that hope early on. Right. Don't they? I mean, I think for the most part they do. But you're right. It is a little bit of a false sense of hope because it usually ultimately leads to most of them being disappointed (laughs) they want that hope but I think they would like and I think at some level they know it's almost like they want to be lied to like when I said to you if people called you to say they've read in the book about the Chris Sims spleen incident I wanted you to say yes they have even if they hadn't they want to be lied to (laughs) they want to be led to believe that this guy that the team I'm serious they want to be led to believe that this guy, their team drafted, is going to be one of the ones that works out, not one of the ones that washes out. And I think one of the reasons why there isn't full transparency from the draft experts as we, yeah, and and people will say, let these kids have their moments. And I don't necessarily disagree with that. Like, why would you be on the night of the draft saying, oh, they used a third round pick on that guy? That guy sucks. Why would they take that guy? Let's watch all the film of all the times he screwed up his assignments and got embarrassed while he was playing college football, and trash him. And I think one of the reasons they don't do it 
is because there is a chance that God's going to be good. It's 50-50. Sure. sure. You don't know. So if you're going to guess one way or the other, you're going to guess the guy's going to be good, not that he's going to be bad. And if he's bad, it's on him. It's not on you. Right. And I think, and I think part of it too, Chris, if they were completely transparent about the fact that half the guys aren't going to be very good, the next question from the fans will be, well, Mr. Draft Expert, whoever you may be, tell me which ones are going to be good and which ones aren't. And the answer is going to be, I don't know. So the response to that will be, then why are we listening to you? Yeah. So there's a, you want to get to the water's edge of uncertainty and not jump in, because once you jump in, you invite questions as to what you really do know. But the answer to that is nobody knows. Yeah. Nobody knows. I can tell you all about everything this guy's did. I can tell you about what the scouts like, what they right. don't like. I can tell you what he did well, what he didn't do well. But I can't tell you what he's going to do at the NFL level. Nobody can. That's the great mystery of this. And I think the effort and the time and the study and the film and the money and the money and the money that gets spent in the scouting process, you would expect at some point somebody's going to crack this code. Nobody has. No, oh, well, that's impossible. It's never going to be cracked that way. It's not. It's humans. Humans are flawed. There's issues. You know, you're not going to be able to portray them or think you're going to be able to, oh, I put them there and now I can figure out how they're going to be in this new environment. There's just too many variables. There, There is. But I do think we see teams that have, you know, lessened the fact or the chance of them being burned in the draft or screwing the draft up to a degree. Now, I do think there are teams that have figured that out for the most part. And again, even with those teams that we say you figure it out, I go, well, every if you took three years of draftable players, they probably still got four or five guys that you go, man, that was a bad pick. It didn't work out. So that is, that's the price of doing business. And, you know, I'm a guy that sits there and does some of that crap you're talking about with the draft. Oh, this is a great pick. This is a, yes, you do want to be positive, one, for the team. You know, a lot of the times the picks themselves make sense as far as what the team needs to a degree. And I think the other fun thing about the draft that makes it fun where, you know, you don't have to be negative about a player, but you can bring this, you know, aspect in which people look as negative is the fact that, you know, oh, this team needs a corner. Oh, they drafted corner X. Are you kidding me? Corner X would have been like my fourth corner. They should have drafted corner Y and Z and W. They were way better. You know, so that's the fun part of the draft, too, is, wait, I think they I know what position they're going to take now. Oh, wait, which one of the three guys that are there available that would make sense to play that position? So there's a lot of things that play into it and none of us know. But I think that's why we all watch. It's sports. It's the best reality TV show going. And uh, I'll be tuned in and you will, too. Come oh, April twenty seventh, I, I know. I, but I, I, I want to be honest and authentic and yes, real with I know. the audience. I I'm not going to participate in this idea that they're all going to be great. I think part of the reason why, with individual picks, we don't hear that truthful assessment is nobody wants to create the tweet or the video of them saying a guy is not going to be good and then he ends up being a future Hall of Famer. You got a problem. It's always better to say a guy is going to be better than he's going to be and have him not live up to it, although they still get you for that too. They will. But I think it's I think it's worse to say that this guy's going to stink and he ends up being great. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.